Howdy, folks, and welcome to GDG Dallas, October 2020. Dallas people hopefully get that joke. My name is Luke. I'm one of the organizers here. Uh, we've got uh, Stacy, another organizer, is also on the line tonight, so keep an eye out for her. Uh, these are the people that are helping organize the group. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us, uh, either through Meetup or on the GDG Dallas Slack. Our Zoom tonight is provided by Bottle Rocket. So it allows us to have several hundred people on the call. So we should be able to handle everybody we need to. Also being sponsored somewhat by Singular with our speaker tonight. Uh, we'll get a little bit into that later. We do have a website, uh, gdgdallas.com. We are in the process of making this a little bit better. Uh, there's a lot of links that we have to different areas to our Slack and our YouTube channel. And so we wanna really uh, consolidate all those in one easy to access place. Right now it's just a redirect to meetup page, but uh, over time, so keep that in mind. If you're ever looking for GDG, GDG Dallas, go to gdgdallas.com. Uh, the official GDG Dallas site through the GDG program that Google runs is at the URL you see on your screen there. Uh, that, but it's a little bit more complex to remember and type in. So again, gdgdallas.com is usually a good place to go. Uh, there's the meetup site where most people find this, but um, that are, and we will have the meetup active for a little while longer. Uh, even though there's kind of a migration going on. So either of those places are still fine. We do have a Slack group, so you can chat throughout the uh, week and months and years as we all grow together. Uh, you can get an invite. Uh, if you ever can't get an invite uh, through that Heroku app there, uh, feel free to reach out to any of us uh, on in the Meetup group, and uh, we will get you set up. We can send you like an email, invite to whatever email you'd like. We also have a YouTube page. Uh, GDG Dallas is everywhere. And you can go back and watch prior meetups on uh, the YouTube page. We uh, just look for the version of GDG Dallas that has the little Texas logo. That's the one you want to look for. Uh, we also have some social uh, accounts that you can follow uh, on Twitter. GDG Dallas and on Instagram, it's currently GDG.Dallas uh, because GDG Dallas was unavailable, although not taken one by anyone else. So we're going to work on uh, transitioning that over time. But for now, if you search GDG Dallas, you should find it. And again, GDGDallas.com is really where you want to go. I wanted to introduce our speaker. It's Moises. Many of you have uh, met him if you've come to any of our in-person events. Um, okay, so I, I know it's Moises. I'm afraid to say his last name just because I don't want to butcher it. It looks like Pedraza, but that's probably the like English Texan pronunciation. Works at Singular as a senior front-end developer. He is uh, in love with clean code, good practices, CSS, JavaScript, and Dr. Pepper Light, of course. Uh, Moises is a web developer who started his journey as a front-end developer when he was trying to share his illustrations to the world through a GeoCities page. Much like my own story, uh, Hollywood 9009, if you're curious what my address was, but that wasn't, you know, Moises, feel free to share yours. That was all back in 1996, before the dot-com bubble even started and well before it burst. Uh, which some of the old timers will probably remember remember fondly. So Moises, please take it away and you can always introduce yourself much better than I can. <laughs> Thank you. You do a great job, Luke. But yeah, I was in love with the web even before I knew it was the World Wide Web. I just want a media to showcase my illustrations back when I was in high, high school, long, long time ago and a lot of hair. But yeah, that's how I started in, <laughs> in web development. Even without knowing it, it was web development. But 
yeah, guys, to, today we have a, a tech talk about iOS and Android development. It's an introduction talk to iOS and Android development, doing it with Expo and React Native. And it all started because I just wanted to create an application to keep track of my retro video games that I want to buy. So that's another thing. I love video game, games and that's also why I started in web development. I used to love the old times when I create little video games with Macromedia Flash. It was Macromedia, it's, it was not even Adobe, but yeah, it was long, long time ago. So when I was searching, how can I create my, because I don't want to create a, just a web application or a progressive web app because I'm pretty familiar with that and well, that's pretty much what I've done in my regular work. So I want a new challenge. That's why I wanted to start learning new things and why I was, well, diving deep into React Native. So with that in mind, I create this little tech talk for you guys. I hope you enjoy. So let's start. Let me share my, my screen. Just a second, please. I'm not that familiar with some with Zoom, but I think I got it. And well, let's begin. Well, as I told you before, guys, it's an introduction to iOS and Android development with Expo and React Native. What we are going to see in this presentation is what is this React Native? React Native, well, what is React, React Native and why do we want to choose React Native? Also, React Native behind the scenes, what it's Expo, pros and cons of using Expo versus React Native CLI, Expo workflow, and we are going to see how to install and get running on an Expo project. It's really, well, spoiler alert, it's really fast doing it with Expo. And also, well, a sneak peek of the code, uh, and a, a demo of the React Native app, app with Expo. So it's, well, it's going to be kind of tough just to show you my, my cell phone screen, but please bear with me. I'm going to be showing you the app, how it's looking right now. And also I'm going to showcase the code, which is pretty straightforward. But let's begin with what is React Native? Well, React Native, React Native it's built with React. What is React? React is a JavaScript library to build user interfaces. It's typically, typically used on web development and it uses React DOM to render the DOM tree. React, uh, well, the cool thing about React is that it's platform agnostic. It's not just restricted for the web, which sometimes we tend to think about React like some tool just to create web interfaces, which is not it's much more than that. And well, what is React Native? React Native, it's a collection of special components. The components are compiled to native widgets. That's the magic of React, which is not magic. It's just uh, using that special sets of, com of components and then building native components on top, of, on top of that components. We have access to native platform APIs exposed to JavaScript Thanks to React Native, we can use some cool features like the camera, the accelerometer, and some of the native core functionality of the cell phone. And it helps us to create web native apps using native code and JavaScript, which is pretty cool. We are not using a web view, which was the case when you were using some technology like Cordoba and PhoneGap. With React Native, you are just, you are rendering real components, native components. And we are using JavaScript for the logic, but we will have, well, we will talk about more about this uh, later. So React Native, uh, React Native, it's like React DOM on web development. It takes React components and compiles it into native widgets. We are using React when we are creating a web application, we, act, we use React with React DOM to just build the UI for our application. With React Native, we are not using React DOM, but we are using React Native. And we are getting these special sets of components from React Native library. And that's why we are using, on, while, that's how we are creating uh, native mobile applications. 
usually uh, React Native code, it's pretty much like this. It looks a lot like React code. You can do either way. You can use stateless components, functional components like this one, which I recommend because we can use React hooks to manage the state. Or we can, if, if we can just use the state components like we used to do in React. It, the cool thing about that is if you have a experienced web developer, it will quickly understand that the learning curve to start using React, React Native is not that high, which is a great pro about this technology. You can just, well, train a little bit your web developers and then they will get the code to start using React Native. We are using here uh, in this example, uh, function component, we are just returning a view, which view is a special component from React Native. It's not an HTML uh, tag, it's a special component from React Native. To see the whole or the complete list about the components that you can use with React Native, you will need to see the documentation, but it's really well documented. They have all the components that you can use. They do it looking much like uh, HTML tags, but they are not HTML tags. They are actual React Native components that it will render into real native components. That's how we do it. We, we use that special blocks of components built with React Native, and then we can when when and then we compile it into actual native code. This is a comparison of the components. When we use React Native to create a wrapper for our view, usually, well, we use a view component. Usually when we use HTML or when we, we use React DOM, React for the web, we use a div tag. On native iOS, we will use UI view and on, uh, and on native Android, uh, we use Android view. In the end, this view component here, it will render for iOS to a UI view component and it will render on a native Android component uh, on an Android view component. So that's the cool part about React Native. We are not just creating a web view and then building all, all our application on top of that. All the UI, it's being rendered to native components. That's the importance for us to start using all the components as it, as it is on React Native. For the text input, it's pretty much the same case. On a web page or on a web application, we use input. On a native iOS, we use UI text field. And on native Android, we use edit text. This text input tag, which is not a tag, it's a component. It will be rendered to UI text field or edit text. So it's important. The view looks like HTML, but it's not HTML. Sorry that I am repeating that too much, but that's an important thing that I think that sometimes it's challenging to understand, especially if you are uh, doing web development because it looks really similar to a HTML tag, but it's not an HTML tag. It's from a set of special reusable components that react native maps to their platform native equi equivalents. Also, one cool thing is that in React Native, we can build our own custom components. But the caveat here is that we will need to create or build that components using the native React uh, components. So it's like pretty much getting those components, creating more complex components. And then that's how we are creating our custom components for React Native, which it's, it kind of follows like a special I look, it looks like atomic design to me because you have your atoms, you have your minimum components there. And then with that, you can create molecules. You can start creating more and more complex components. That's how we work with React uh, Native. Uh, also guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. Feel free to, to ask. But that was React Native. React Native in the end, help us to create really fast proof of concepts and start um, a project, especially if you are doing like a small project or you don't have uh, a lot of developers or you don't want to maintain two code bases. 
So that's especially, it comes especially handy React Native on those cases. Uh, so, well, let's talk about React Native under the hood. While React Native compiles all the UI components to native components, it treats the JS logic in a different fashion. All the UI components are rendered to native code, and that's pretty cool. We're not using web views. But what happened with the JavaScript code? Does it get compiled? Well, no. JavaScript code, it's not get compiled. JavaScript logic, it's treated in a special way. It's, well, uh, React Native have a special thread for all the JavaScript logic. It hosts a special virtual machine just for the, well, uh, um, it's like a node engine that it runs all the JavaScript logic there. So JavaScript will be JavaScript always, even though it's inside the application. That's not compiled. In the end, this is how it looks once when you create the build of your application. You have your UI components that go to render into native components. And then you have your business logic. This business logic, it's inside a JavaScript core virtual machine that it's running on a special thread inside of your application once it's created and bundled, once you have your actual application running on your mobile phone. That logic, it's communicating through the na native components and your native mobile features using a bridge. With the bridge, you communicate your JavaScript logic to the native module, native platform modules and vice versa. That's how React Native works. So it's not a hundred percent native application. No, the view it's a hundred percent native because all the components are created and are running on top of native components. Yeah, the components are of the view, it's a hundred percent native, but the logic, uh, I'm afraid not. The logic is JavaScript build. Uh, well, you have a virtual machine running your JavaScript logic communicating through a bridge, which is not that bad. It's not like having all your application, well, bundled inside a web view. It's faster this way and also you have more access to your native uh, application device. Another cool thing is that, well, I haven't done that, but I know that you can just have part of your code built with React Native with JavaScript. And also if you're using the React Native CLI, you can also have native code there and you can have native components interacting with your React Native application, which is which is cool, but then I don't quite get to the point of creating an application in React Native because if you are going to develop, well, your half of your application with React Native and other half of your application on, I don't know, on, well, on Kotlin or on Swift, then you will have to maintain the two code bases and part of the purpose of this, well, but Maybe it could help if you start like a small startup and then you continue growing and then you want to slowly migrate this React Native tool to two native, to two native applications. That may be the case when that could come handy, but that's a, that's a possibility that you can have using React, React Native. You can start adding uh, native logic and native components to your React Native app, which it's kind of cool. Hey Moises. Yep. I've got a question. Um, sure. You said that the the React Native UI is completely done with native components. What if you yeah. have something that that can't be represented by native components, like some kind of specialized art or part of a game or something? For games, I don't think it's quite possible. Maybe you will need to use Unity or one game engine to create that because, yeah. Video games, it's a really different thing. I was just researching exactly on that because I start, well, I I was curious about that. I want to also test that with video games, but it seems like for that kind of things, it's just better using Unity or using Unreal Engine. Yeah, React Native doesn't have that kind of components. That's another thing that it's, 
well, they are working on that, but they don't have all the components uh, existing. They have a, a huge set of components, but sometimes you need something ex specific. And that's also why they leave the possibility to interact with native code, because sometimes they just don't have that component. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes so sense, that thanks. Makes, sure. But well, we talk a lot about React Native. Now let's talk about Expo. The question is, what is Expo? Expo is a framework a plat and a platform. It's not jo it not just helps you creating your project, but it also helps you hosting and publishing your project your project inside his platform. Why do you want that? Well, maybe it's uh, in an early stage your application and you just want to showcase to your team members or to present to someone and you don't want to build the application and then um, just create the package and share it because it's quite a burden. You just share a package, you need to, well, your friend needs or your fellow needs to know how to install that, uh, that package and it uh, starts to get complicated. So for uh, Expo, well, Expo takes care of that. You can just upload the code to that, their platform. They will give you a nice QR code. You can uh, just scan that QR code with Expo app that you could install in your cell phone, and then you will have the, the application running in your mobile device. So it's a framework, but it's also a platform. It's a universal React application manager. And what do I mean with universal React applications? Well, as I to told you before, React, it's not just React Native. You can create web applications also with React. So it will help you with React, uh, React Native and also with React DOM. You can create web applications and it helps you building web applications or mobile applications. It also helps you with the develop, build, and deploy. Okay, it another creates... question. Sure. I'm sorry if if I'm asking too many. Just let me know. Um, oh, don't you worry. see there in the in the screen there. This is recommended by Nate, React Native documentation. What percentage of real world applications are usually deployed with Expo? That's a good question, and I'm afraid I don't have the answer to that. I got to get Expo because I was looking through the React Native documentation, and on the installing the application, they recommend using Expo. But okay. I'm not. Uh, we are, but what we are gonna see it's the pros and cons of using Expo. That's okay. something that I, that I do know, uh, and I can help with that. All right, yeah. cool. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and well, yeah, it has a mobile app and a CLI. What do I mean with that? Well, you can, you need to download your the mobile app into your device, into your mobile cell phone, in order to just debug your Expo application that you are developing in your computer using the CLI. And it's recommended by React Native documentation on the getting started section. This is a, a list of pros and cons uh, between using Expo CLI versus React Native CLI. Well, Expo CLI is a third party, and even though it's 100% free, it's a third party, so you will need, well, it's not mandatory, but if you want to have the cool features like just helping them to share your application without having to uh, and helping with the deploys, yeah, you will need to have an account. If you don't just want to use Expo to develop your app application and test it on your mobile phone, you don't need a, an account, but all the cool things comes when you give your data to, to Expo. So it's a third party and that's not that great. But what it is great, it's that you have a all wired managed app development. What do I mean with that? If you want, you just can start a project with Expo and then start debugging it in your mobile device. You don't need to download Android Studio or Xcode to debug your application because usually when you are developing a mobile application, well, uh, first of all, I'm right now I'm using my personal computer and it's a Windows gaming machine. So I'm not able to to compile it to iOS if I want because you need mandatory to have a a MacBook or an Apple computer 
to create iOS applications. But with Expo, I can develop my uh, I can develop my application with my Windows machine, and then I can publish and can I can deploy it to Expo, and they will take care of creating the the package, the application. So I don't need to have a Windows computer to develop a Mac application, which is pretty cool. It takes away a lot of complexity when you are just starting because you just want to deep dive in, well, especially if you just want to deep dive in your application code and you don't want to deal with the wiring of all the application. It's really cool with fa because it lets you have fast and easy prototypes, but it's limited to the Expo ecosystem. So if you want to have fine grain on your application or you want to tweak it, everything, it's maybe not the best. It, for experienced and advanced developers, maybe it's not the best option. And also it gives you an extra layer around your app, the Expo layer. The pros and cons about using React Native CLI is that it is maintained by the React Native team. So that is something that will be, we have, they have a huge uh, community just maintaining this project. But it's kind of verbon and it, their learning curve is somehow complex. And also, well, you need to wire the whole application and you need to install Android Studio and Xcode to debug your application and to build your application. It's somehow complex to set up the device features because with Expo, you have APIs to connect the accelerometer, to connect uh, the gyroscope of your mobile device. And that's pretty easy. You have Expo methods to do that. With React Native, it's a little bit, it's not like a daunting task, but it's more difficult than just using Expo. So if you are just starting, Expo is the perfect choice. But if you want fine grain control or you want to start using native code and React components or integrate with core components, well, maybe React Native CLI, it's your choice. But you can always start developing with Expo because it has a cool feature. You can always start your app development using it and then eject to continue working with the React Native CLI when you need it. So if you want to create a fast prototype, you can start doing it uh, with React Native using Expo. And once you have a more robust project or you will, or once you need it, you can always do an eject and then you can continue using React Native when you need it. So you don't need to always use Expo. You can get rid of Expo once you, well, when you don't need it. Uh, any questions uh, at this point? Okay, well, the Expo workflow, workflow. As I mentioned before, Expo consists on two parts. What you are doing and when you are setting up on your computer and the things that you are doing and you are setting up on your cell phone. We usually, or this is how I started it. When I know, when I install Expo, what I do first is I install, I download and install the Expo CLI. Then, well, I use Node, but you can, you can also use Yarn if you want. I download the Expo CLI, then I create a new project using Expo. I do an NPM install to download all the dependencies and then I start the program in the terminal. At, the data, at that point, I just want to test if it was working, so I continue on my cell phone. I go to, I have an Android device, so I go to Google Play and I download the Expo app. It's for iOS and for Android. And then, with that, and that's it on, on your mobile phone. That's just it if you don't want to publish your application on Expo, if you just want to test it. When you open your app, you can just uh, present a QR, well, just scan a QR code that appears on your terminal. And then your project is going to be running on your device. And you can debug your complete application using that device. But also Expo lets you install Xcode or Android St Studio in case you want it. So you can have emulators on your computer and you can test it in different emulators on different devices. You, for that, you will need to download Android Studio and download a couple of images of cell phones, of different cell phones. 
And on an Apple computer, it's easier because you just need to have Xcode, update your Xcode, and you can have there the devices that you want to use, usually a couple of iPhones and also iPads there. But you don't need to do that mandatory because you can do, you, you can just use your Expo CLI and your mobile device and that's it. Well, this is a couple of comments that you need to do to install Expo in your computer. It's just running into, well, if you don't have Node, you need to install Node. And uh, that's something that happens to me yesterday. Uh, the complete code that I'm going to show you right after this was made in my works uh, MacBook. I was using the MacBook, I was using Expo, I was a happy guy. But then I noticed that the Tech Talk was going to be on Zoom and we have a company policy that it bans Zoom. So I need to pass my code to my PC. Well, not big deal, right? I just need to upload uh, the code to my GitHub, then download in my PC and then install Expo with the same steps that I'm giving you here, guys. And that's it. Well, not. Since I usually use this computer to play games, I don't have my node, I didn't have my node uh, updated, so it was not working. So the only thing that I need to do is updating my node inside my machine. Well, also that's recommended because it has some security patches. So if you haven't updated node, maybe it's a good time to do it. Once I upda uh, updated my node, uh, everything runs perfect. I just do the npm install minus g expo CLI and then I create, uh, well, I didn't create a new project to be honest in my PC because I have already the project created. I just downloaded it from my repo, which by the way, I'm gonna give you at the end of this presentation in case you want to download the code base and play a little bit with that. And that's it. To run, your code you just need to go into your file and the file that you have created do an npm install to download all the dependencies well npm if you are using node but you can also use jar and then just do an npm start when you do the npm start it will run the screen with a qr code you just need to scan that qr code with your mobile device and then you can start uh, developing your application the cool thing about expo is that it's all wired and also that it has, well, while you are developing, you are just seeing your code in the, in, in the mobile cell phone. So it's pretty convenient. Now, Moises, yeah. Question, sorry. Um, sure. as, you, as I'm sure you know, you can use uh, create React app with NPX. Can you do that with Expo or is Expo needed on the regular, like like maybe Angular or something like that. Can you use e Expo with NPX? I haven't tried with NPX, okay. but so uh, I don't know, but yeah, if you're doing a regular uh, web application, you would need to do it with NPX. For Expo, uh, as far as I know, no, because on the documentation it was, say, well, these are steps I took it from the documentation. And okay. they don't talk about NPX like they do on, on yeah. the React. <laughs> Surely if you could, they would have told you. Okay, thank you. Sure. And well, now let's have a look at the code of an app created with React Native and Expo. I would love to code this application with you guys, but I think that it will take like a lot of time. So maybe in the future we can do like a, I don't know, like a couple of meetings to create a, an application with you. But for now, I developed this application uh, taking in consideration that I want to showcase with you guys. So let me show you. Well, this is how Expo CLI looks like. Let me just crash the server. So you just need to do npm start. So, that will do pretty much an expo start and it runs the metro bundler 
Here you have also the QR. You can just scan this QR with your mobile device. I don't know if it's seen here. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but let me just scan it using the Expo app. You can scan that QR code and then you will have the application inside your, your mobile phone. I think I will need to turn off this, well, this background because it's not letting me show you the, the phone. But well, I'm gonna showcase the application once we finish the code. Just let's continue with the code for now. But right now the application it's running on my mobile device. When you create a new project with Expo, this is the, the structure that it creates. It creates an asset folder. The component folder was created by me. That's like the way I used to work. That's not created by Expo, but it creates the assets folder. It creates the Git ignore for you. The app.js, which he, well, right now it has the code that I have done, but it creates a basic app.js so you can just open the application it's like the hello world from react native what it gives you but it's already wired it gives you this app.json file which is really important because here you are configuration you are configuring your application when you are going to bundle well here it has a really basic setup but here you will you will be adding the permissions you will be adding the name, the slug, the slug, it's where, it's the URL that is going to be made by Expo, so you can share your application. In the end, it would like, it would look like www.expo.io slash uh, and the slug, retro game hunt for this one. That's how you can share the URL and someone can just scan your QR code. You control the version of your application, the orientation, which can be portrait or it could be landscape or it could be both if you want your application to be able to just get that orientation. The icon that you are putting on your application, the splash screen. Also, another cool thing about this uh, Expo tool is that once you pass the icon, it creates you all the icon sets for all the devices that you are going to use. So, well, you may want to just pass a high res resolution image because with that image is going to create all the icon sets. For the splash screen, it's pretty, mu pretty much the same. It will create all the splash screens for the different Dubai devices. Uh, these are, well, these are looking like CSS, the background color and the resize resize mode contained, but we will talk a little bit more about how we style the application in a couple of seconds. Uh, the updates, that's a pretty cool thing with, because with Expo you have this cool feature about the updates that once you publish your application, you can just, well, create another build and you can, uh, uh, well, you don't need to wait for the user to download your updates. You can just send an update and it will get it once you open the application. If you put this fallback to, to cache timeout to zero, what it will do is when you open the application, it will check if it has an update. If it, if it has an update, it will download the update. And when you open again the application, it will start with the updated application. But you can also put some fallback time to, instead of doing right now when you open the application, to do it later if you, you want. Also, you have the asset bundle patterns uh, and the configuration for iOS. For Well, you can create another object like this one. It's Android. And pass the special configuration that you may need inside of, of this one. All the co possible configuration that you can have here, it's inside the Expo documentation. I will share the three links with you once we end this presentation. One, the React Native documentation, two, the Expo documentation, and three, the repo for this project. But 
this is how you uh, you pass the configuration that you want to have when you are creating the application per se. So these are the configuration that it's going to get for Expo to create the application. And it also has a web, uh, a web key in this object because you can also create web applications with Expo. But, well, you can get rid of this one if you are just going to create uh, mobile applications. But all the configuration for your application on Expo, it's inside this app JSON. Then we will have our Babel config because we are using ECMAScript newest version, package log, and your package JSON. Uh, well, one thing that happens to me also, right now I just change the React Native to the tag to use the latest version and up that they have. When you just create your application with Expo, it will hard code here a URL and sometimes it breaks. So what I do is just in my project, change that to the tag version that I want to use and that works fine. And you can set this private to true or to false. Also, you can add that configuration in your app JSON for Expo. Let me see, it's already here. I think it's not, but you can also set this application as private. So you can only, only the owner of the project can scan and see the application when it's published to Expo. So even though they get your, uh, your URL, if they scan the QR code, but you are setting this to private, they cannot access to your application. But for all of that cool features, you will need to create an Expo account, which it's free, but it's an account. So, but well, any questions until this point? No? Okay, then let's move it on to the code. This is how we create the the project here. We are importing React because we are using React with React Native and we are importing use state from React because I'm not creating state components, I'm just creating functional components and I'm using React hooks to manage the state. So I'm importing React and state. This is an important part. Usually when we create a React web application, here we import React DOM. But here we are not importing React DOM because we don't need that. But what we are importing is a React Native and we are the structuring these components, which are the components that I'm using here from React Native. So here I'm using a style sheet because I want to give styles to my application. I'm the structuring view because uh, all your views are contained inside this view component. So this is also somehow tricky to get while you were starting because maybe if you're a web developer you are you, you are used to use divs here you cannot use divs you are using view components and sometimes you will need to grab your components inside view components because you can style you have a lot of options to style a view component but you have really few options to style for example a text component so if you want to add uh, a special color surrounding your text. On HTML, it's pretty easy because you just point your CSS to your P tag and that's it. You can have the whole array of options on that P tag, but here, no. Here you need sometimes to pass the styles, which are not styles, by the way, to your view component in order to style that part of the application. So view components are really important. And also, uh, by the way, the view components by default uses Flexbox rules. So that's how they behave. Like if you are using a display flex on CSS. I'm also importing a button, a flat list to control a list of elements and image background because you cannot use image backgrounds on the view. You need to use the view, the image background, grabbing your element to have an image as a background, which also it's kind of strange from the beginning, but well, this is how it works. In the end, this is because you are rendering native components. So 
you will need to somehow mimic the way you will be doing this if you were creating a native application. So here, first I import React, then I import the components from React components that I need to use. Then I'm importing my custom components that I made. Let me open one just to show you how I create a custom component. For example, my goal input. Well, uh, let me open an easier one. My input, my item. This, this component I created, it's a custom component, but as I told you before, I was using uh, React Native components and I was building my component on top of that. I just used Touchable Opacity, which is the component that let you have that touch behavior inside your application. I'm using a view to give styles to a text box. And I'm passing styles here and I'm exporting it. Uh, on React Native, styles behaves in a different fashion because they are not CSS styles. You have a style sheet method that has create and inside create, you pass an object with a set of rules, which are made to look like CSS, but they are not CSS. They are an object with a set of rules that they are giving the configuration for or, or the design for that view. For example, here I am doing a padding, I'm passing background, I'm passing border color, passing border width and margin vertical. If I'm using in CSS, if it will be meant to be pixels, you don't put pixels here, just put the number. But if you want to use percentage, well, this is not a valid object. So you will grab this between ticks and make this a string so then it will render this as a 10 percent in background color pretty much the same you have to wrap it into quotes all that it's not um, that it's forbidden on objects follow the same rule as you're creating an object here and then you are passing it here inside a special style tag that has the React Native component. First you create, well, first you import your style sheet component, then you create a constant that has the create method, and inside the method you create the objects containing the set of rules. And those objects are the ones that you are passing inside this style to your component. If you want to create another rule, it will be just as easy as create list item two, for example, which is a new object. And then adding rules. And then you can just add it, for example, to your text, no, to your view as list item two, and then it will take the second uh, key of object, uh, the second object inside the first object. So you are just passing objects with configuration and your components. Okay. Any questions, comments? Okay, it's, actually, yes. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Is this going to be available? Is it on GitHub or anything? Yeah, it's on GitHub, this repo. So I'm going to share it with. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Hey, Mike, I have a question too. <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, there is any unit uh, for the sizes, like, you know, the like M or RAM, something like that, or only the number for pixels and percentage in a string? You can use, yeah, percentage and pixels for this one. Okay. Uh, you have to duplicate this slice in there. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. I'm going to delete this one because I'm not using it. It was just for the example. And then, let me, yeah, I, I removed this too. But yeah. And also, uh, well, that's a good question because even though it looks like CSS, it's not CSS. And some rules, like for example, on CSS, you can do 
10, 12, 13, and 24, and you will have top, uh, right, bottom, left. But here you cannot do that because it's an object and you can have, you can't have this on an object. So those kind of rules that we have in CSS doesn't work here. So let's return to our app. Here I'm just importing all the components for the app. I'm returning a functional component. And this component, it's the one that it's creating. Well, I have my state hooks here, my handler methods, and the main view for these applications. And these are the styles that are not uh, styles. So now let me show you how this application looks like. For that, let me just, I need to, I think on Zoom, I need to take out the background image because I cannot. Uh, yes, here, let me just, uh, do I need to stop, sorry, do I need to stop sharing the screen to take out my background image on Zoom? No, you should like to turn off your virtual uh, background. Thank you. Yeah, I found it. Okay. Okay. So, sorry. This is a spoiler. Just let me show you guys how the application looks. This is how the application looks. In the end, we have a header. We have a button when we are going to a our video games and we have our footer here those are all react components when we click add game we can add right here our video game and like i'm adding just river city ransom which is a game I want to have. And when I add it, it just presented there. It present as a list. So you can start adding video games and that's it. All of these components are native components. There are no web views on that. And all are created using React Native and an Expo. If you just click this, this guy, it will disappear. And that's uh, another component that you have inside React Native. So that's pretty cool because this application took me like two hours to create. And that's, well, just uh, with the knowledge that I have already with React and a couple of documentation to read. So it's really easy to just start doing Expo. Well, it's just really easy to start doing React Native applications when you have background or experience using React, the learning cube, the learning curve using React Native and Expo is really small. You just need to get used to some kind of rules like styles are, CSS styles are not CSS styles and your tags are not HTML tags but actual components and you will be safe. It's not that hard. And well, uh, uh, when I start using Expo, I noticed that it it is really easy because a lot of things that you usually need, need to wire up, especially when you are starting or creating new projects, are already there. Even though it was quicker and easier to me to set up this Expo application than a React uh, application using Create React App, which is not that hard, but this one is way easier, at least for me or in my opinion. So that was Expo and that was Re React Native. So let's continue. Well, before I move on to the final bit of the tech talk, do you have any questions? Okay, then what we learn? Well, we learn that React Native uses React. Well, it has React on his name, sorry. <laughs> it evidently uses React. It uses his own set of components. It compiles to 
all the UI it's compiled to it's compiled to native code. It handles JavaScript. Lo, it says login. Sorry, it's JavaScript logic on a special thread, and it's like uh, I said, uh, running a virtual machine inside a small virtual machine or a small virtual engine inside your uh, application on a special thread. And it's great to create iOS and Android application with just one code base. It's easy to start using it if you have experience with React and it's really fun to start. That's React Native. An Expo is a third party company. It's a framework to develop, manage and publish your app. It's a computer CLI and a mobile app. It handles the management and connections of your app hassle free helps to test your app in your mobile device, which is really cool. I love testing my application on my device because, well, it's, I think it's the feeling of having something that you can touch and play with that in your mobile phone, but that's just a personal taste. There are people that prefer to, also debug, you can debug your applications, uh, testing it in your app and then debug it in with the Chrome developer tools. The, but that's another talk. I think we can create a whole talk about on how to the on how to not just develop but debug applications. But that's something pretty cool that Expo also have it. You can publish and share your app if you have an account, and it's great to create fast proof of concepts. Um, I think that's it, guys. Those are the links. I'm gonna share with you guys in a couple of seconds and well that's it thank you very much uh, hey thank you moises sure a pleasure like always look yeah. that, that, was, was, uh, yeah. that was very good so yeah, yeah let's open up for uh questions or comments Repo link once more time, please. I didn't get it. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm gonna just copy and paste it. I just okay. Great. Thank you. Me. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. No, no problem at all. My pleasure. I'm on that. Just a second. With the license there, my. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They had they they had to give you their first uh, key or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the link to the the repo. This is the link to Expo documentation. And let me just share also the link to React Native documentation. So these are all being shared in the chat on yep. Zoom, and if you're watching this recording, they will be shared in the description or somewhere else along with this video. I have a question, my uh, respect, uh, I mean, related with the, um, with the Expo framework, yep. uh, do you think that there's something, uh, I mean, in my opinion, it's something that I helped you a lot? As, as I learned here with you, thank you. Uh, but do um, you think that is something that is, is suitable only for POCs or, or also for production uh, application? I mean, it's made to be production ready. And I think it depends because if it's a small application, I think that it's more than enough. But if it's a huge application that you will have with millions of people downloading it. I think it's a good start. Then you can just eject the app and continue doing the things that you need using React Native. And in the long term, you can hire, I don't know, a big team of Android developers and a big team of iOS developers and start migrating the application to native code. Well, that would be the perfect scenario, right? But we know that that doesn't happen that often. So yeah, it's it's really good for, uh, I think, in my opinion, for startups and also for small projects, and for projects with 
not that much developers. So for a two or three men army, it's perfect. But if you, well, I think it depends on your needs, but that Expo framework, it's, it's made to be production ready and to be used on production. Mm -hmm. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, perfectly, thank you. Any other questions? If not, we'll give a virtual round of applause for our speaker tonight. Feel free to use the reactions. There are the little clapping hands, I believe is what they're, uh, and, or you, if you're on the video, you can do the little ASL, <laughs> you know, applause and uh, it's, pretty good so thank you so much Moises for being here we will go ahead and stop the recording for the night and then uh, if anybody wants to hang out and chat just a little bit more with any kind of further questions or maybe unrelated to the talk tonight uh, we'll be around a little bit so thanks for coming everybody my pleasure I need to wait to see you here guys thank you Bye, all. thank you thank all you. thank you